Today we're talking to Jim Maniquez, who is the Director of Technology at the Webb School of Knoxville. This is a school who has decided to give the iPad a try, and I'm really excited to talk to Jim. Welcome to MommyCast. Thank you. Thank you for talking to me. So tell me a little bit about what led you down the path of getting iPads for all of the kids in the school. Sure. There's, there's really a, 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 a lot of different reasons. So we looked at uh, you know, a full computer, laptop kind of thing. We also looked at netbooks. The problem with both computers, laptops, and, and netbooks is that they're very complicated. The other problem is they're, they're very difficult and expensive to support. Uh, trying to have uh, a thousand uh, laptops on campus, I'd have to hire three or four additional people to, to deal with the tech problems that can arise. So we looked at all of that. Then, then you have the iPad that's cheaper than a laptop. I mean, a, a third the cost. Uh, maybe not ch as cheap as uh, a netbook, but in, in my mind, you have many more advantages over a netbook than you have disadvantages. They're, they're instant on, extremely easy to use, very easy to support. And one of the advantages to us that if you talk to the public, maybe they would say is a disadvantage, is Apple's uh, what they call the walled garden. So Apple manages pretty much every facet of what happens with the iPad. This is good for a school. I don't have to worry about a piece of software that doesn't right. work with another piece of software because Apple's already done mm -hmm. that for me. I have to tell you that when the iPad first came out and I had a look at it, I started a Facebook page called iPads for Education. Because I can't think of a more perfect instrument for in the classroom. Uh, and, I, and I think that you're right. For easily 95% of everything that we do in a classroom, it's going to be great. Yeah. I think the thing that, we're, that I was looking at is, you know, getting the textbooks mm -hmm. to be e-books. Um, how, how is that progress going from your point of view? Uh, not anywhere near as good as I would like. Yeah. Uh, the the uh, publishers are have not caught up to it yet. I mean, they they are still behind the times. So we are we are playing catch up here, to, to, or or kind of ahead of the game, and they're going to have to play catch up to to get what we need. We are going to have some uh, electronic interactive textbooks next year. Where we don't have the full interactive textbook, we will have PDF versions of books. Mm -hmm. So we hope to have 70 or 80 percent of our books in some form on the iPad. Right. It's not going to be the form that we want, but it, at least they're not going to have to carry the, the, the paper around. Right. And I think, I think that's one of the big things that, you know, when you've got this, my son's backpack weighs over 40 pounds. It's sure. crazy absolutely crazy and to think that you can put this plus you know when you print a book it's instantly obsolete when mm -hmm. you have an ebook you can do those constant updating exactly right uh, they I mean obviously it's it's where we're going uh, the the subscription models are, are what we want to see uh, the the uh, a textbook will cost a fifth of, of what it might be if you were actually buy it you know an 80 or 90 dollar book you could get for a year for 16 dollars your school is a public or a private school, but I think the public school system could really, should really look at the, the, the pluses and minuses here too, because I, I have to believe this could save them a lot of money in the long oh, run. I agree completely. Uh, just, just because our kids have to buy the book doesn't mean, I mean, in a public school, the books have to be purchased. Right. So you're paying through tax money, what have you, the, the, the cost is still there. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing, I mean, there's a couple of other things that I've really, I, you know, the audiovisual element. Um, you know, I think about all of the, the AV equipment that has to be maintained in a classroom setting and how you could just have the kids, you know, tap on an app and watch a particular video with their earphones in and then do an interactive quiz that then gets sent to the teacher. I mean, how awesome could that be? The, the uh, applications are, are literally unlimited. We're, we don't even know all of the things that are going to be available to us going into this. I and mean, we have some pretty good ideas, but we fully expect this to, to literally explode when they have it in their hands. Right. Uh, I mean, we just can't imagine 
all of the, the opportunities that this is going to open up to us. Now they're going to have this 24-7. The, the, the idea for us, they can learn anywhere. If they, if they want to research something while they're, they're sitting at home or walking through the zoo or whatever, they have this in their hand, and they, they can use that as a learning opportunity wherever, whenever they want. So tell me a little bit about the nuts and bolts of how you are affording this. I mean, are, is every student going to be expected to purchase one or rent one, or how is that working? Uh, what we're doing is giving them the option to bring their own if they want and offering a, a three-year lease for anybody that would like to pay over time. Mm -hmm. Uh, the way that works is we're, we're contracting with Apple. Apple will sell the iPads to the school or lease the iPads to the school, and we'll turn around and bill the parents for a, a monthly fee for for the use of those iPads. At the end of the three year lease, they own the iPad. Right. Uh, it'll be it'll be theirs. And can you give me an idea of what that monthly lease fee would be? <clears throat> yes, we're we're still working on the exact pricing, but we expect. Uh, it to be as low or even lower than twenty dollars a month. It just it's a no brainer, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, and and as as uh, electronic books become available, they'll easily save that in the difference in cost. So uh, we really expect this to be a wash over time. Yeah, you know one of the things that I am, have become painfully aware of over the last probably fifteen years is how unequal the educational opportunities are in our country. And I see a small rural school who maybe doesn't have access to a really wonderful chemistry teacher or a really wonderful physics teacher, and yet there's a wonderful chemistry or physics teacher in a large metropolitan area 200 miles away. And the ability to video stream that teacher's lectures to the, the iPad in the rural setting or podcast vidcast, that type of thing, it could potentially be a real equalizer in education. No, you're absolutely right. Distance learning is starting to to reach um, maturity, if you will. Uh, it's starting. We're starting to see it more and more in schools, and uh, I think that having the iPad in a student's hands will will certainly help with yeah. that. Yeah. Well, I think it's fabulous, and I'm really looking forward to seeing this this program at your school. Actually, will begin in August, so I'm That's really correct. looking forward to to seeing how it goes with you. I hope. <laughs> so <are we. laughs> I'm sure you are. <laughs> Good luck with it, and congratulations. I think it's fabulous. It's a wonderful step forward. Thank it's you very much. It's great talking to you. To you, too. For more information for our viewers, you can join us on mommycast.com. Join the conversation on MommyCast's Facebook page, on our Ning community, or join us on Twitter. Mm -hmm.